Greetings again today in the name of Jesus Christ, our wonderful Lord and Savior. Good to see you here in the auditorium of the Northside Baptist Church today. We welcome every one of you. May the Lord bless you. And you that's listening out in the radio listening audience, we most certainly appreciate you tuning in to the Northside Baptist Church Hour that's coming to you live right from the auditorium of the Northside Baptist Church here in Athens, Georgia. Now, this is Preacher Edwards speaking. We're hoping during the hour coming up we can be a real inspiration to you. And you in the radio listen audience, if you get on your phone, call a friend, have them to tune in and get this hour, I'm sure they'll be blessed and we'd appreciate it so very much. I want you to take your Bible and turn to the book of Daniel, chapter 1, page 898. I want to make this announcement in behalf of the Independent Baptist Fellowship of the State of Georgia. We meet quarterly and we'll be meeting tomorrow afternoon at 2 o'clock over at Camp Maranatha, located between Danielsville and uh, Isler. That's Camp Maranatha between Danielsville and Isler for the quarterly meeting of the Independent Baptist Fellowship of the State of Georgia, which was organized here in this church in 1962. I had the privilege of serving as its moderator for the first three years. And the uh, fellowship has been a real inspiration to a lot of people. And it's not just for preachers only. There'll be a good many preachers there. There'll be some good speakers beginning in the afternoon, going right on through the evening. And so if you can go for the fellowship tomorrow, whether you preach or not, you go and get in on it out there at Camp Maranatha. I know you'll enjoy it. I want you to turn to page 898. I'm going to speak today on this subject. The quartet that wouldn't bend, wouldn't bow, and would not burn. The quartet that would not bend, would not bow, and would not burn. Now we'll give you some scripture text in just a moment. But I want you to turn there and follow me in the scriptures. Now you can write in and get this tape today, both music and message. And this will be tape number 240. Tape number 240 for a gift of $3 and have the tape or any other tape we have. We have all these listed here. We'd like to send you a list of our cassette tape. Just write in and request it and say, Preach Edwards, send me a list of your tape. This is a home mission work. We depend upon those that love God to work with us in taking care of the, the expense of this ministry. And you pray for us. My mailing address is Virgil Edwards. P.O. Box 501, Athens, Georgia, 30603 is the zip code number. Now we thank the Lord for the rain. You know, we had two good showers here in Athens, night before last and night before that, and hoping to get more. And I hope you got a good shower of rain in your area. A lot of people praying for rain. It's been awful, terribly hot. Someone is telling me, uh, you either read or heard about how it was so hot in this man's on his farm, he went out to check on one of his pigs or hogs, and it's so hot until the hog had melted and the lard had run out in his potato patch, ice potato patch, and so hot out there the some potatoes had jumped out of the ground and he picked up about a half a bushel of French fries out there in his potato patch. Well now that's getting pretty hot, don't you think so? I'm not saying that actually happened. I said I heard that or read it somewhere. As up to you as whether or not you believe it. But we do know it's been uh, real hot. And we need to keep praying that God will give us more rain and kind of cool off the situation. And I believe God's going to do that. I feel like it. Now I want you to turn to Daniel chapter 1 verse 8. But Daniel purposed in his heart he would not defile himself with a portion of the king's meat. Nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore he requested the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. Now that's Daniel chapter 1. Daniel just wouldn't bend. He was a real true child of God. Then we find in Daniel chapter 3. I'm not going to take time to read uh, uh, this chapter. But in this chapter you'll find that the three Hebrew children. The friends of Daniel. Daniel. There's three of them, and Daniel made four, which made the quartet. They refused to bow. 
Now they were commanded to bow down to Nebuchadnezzar's image, and they refused to bow. They'd rather go to the fiery furnace than to bow. And so they would not bow down to Nebuchadnezzar's image and worship that image. And they were thrown into a furnace heated seven times hotter than ordinary. And they would not burn. Now they wouldn't be in. Daniel wouldn't be in. In chapter 6 of Daniel you'll find that whenever they told him he couldn't pray anymore. Uh, if he did he'd be thrown into a den of lions. And when Daniel heard that he that the king had signed that decree, he went ahead and prayed anyway. He wouldn't bend. He's a man that he wouldn't bend toward evil. And he did that which was right. He went to his window facing Jerusalem, and he prayed like he always did. And when they found he wouldn't bend, they took him and put him in a den of lions. One of the best night's rest he had in a long time is down there in that den of lions. I believe he just laid his head on one of them's stomach, and he, as he breathed, it just moved him up and down like a baby in a cradle. The quartet, they had great conviction. They, they believed in what they believed and stood for what they believed. And the Bible says here in chapter 1 and verse 8 of Daniel that he would not drink the king's wine nor eat the king's meat. Now these three fine Hebrew boys had been brought out of Jerusalem they were Nazarites, no doubt, and they would not drink wine. They would not eat uh, meat. They were vegetarians that only eat vegetables. And the king said, take these four boys and feed them on my wine and on my meat because I need these boys. They're very brilliant. I need them. I need their sagacity. And I want you to feed them on meat and wine, make them look good that they might have uh, wisdom to give me the answers I need. Daniel would not be, and he said, I'm not going to drink your wine, and I'm not going to eat your meat. I'll eat your vegetables. That's all. And his three partners, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were with him. They refused to be in. He said, I'm not going to, they were young men, and they would not drink the king's wine, nor eat his meat. And so they tried them for 10 days to see how they would look physically and how they would pan out mentally. And at the close of the 10-day period, they looked better. They were better in better shape mentally than ever before. And the prince, the eunuch, saw it working, and so he just maintained their diet. He just fed them on nothing but vegetables, and God blessed them, and God was with them. Now, I want you to notice this young man would not, these three boys would not bend. They were young boys, just kids, you might say, but they had backbone, they had conviction. I thank God today that we still have some young people that's got backbone and will not bend to the sins and the occults and the favors of this world, but stand four square for God. There are so many of our young people today out here on dope and on tobacco and various other things, wrecking their bodies and their minds on alcohol, is driving up and down the highways at breakneck speed, and killing themselves and killing others. And you'd be surprised to know how many teenagers commit suicide in America every day and how many attempt suicide. Understand there's about a thousand at least of our teenagers that attempt suicide every day in America. This terrible rock and roll music and hard rock and junk of that type is driving them batty and they're committing suicide and they're getting on dope, they're smoking pot and taking other uh, phase of dope and there they're committing suicide every day. And that's bad, that's terrible. And you have so many of our leaders in the world today that cater to that and encourage that for a financial reason until they're sending our young people to suicide and into a devil's hell, many of them. I heard on the news this morning on this station where you're listening now that crime in America is on the increase over the last year. And the state of Georgia is leading the crime increase in the nation. Now let that sink in. The state of Georgia is leading in crime increase in America, more and more crime committed. Now that's pathetic. Even today you have 
uh, leaders in our uh, businessmen and so forth, in our county, in our state, they don't care anything in the world about the lives of our young people, about the welfare of your home or this county or this state. Crime is on the increase because the broken down uh, judicial system and uh, judges like the Stooges, the three Stooges that overturned the murders of the all day family and the uh, liberal appeal court judges that stayed these executions and all of that is against the law abiding citizens here in our nation and in our state and they could care less about the welfare of your family, whether some criminal comes in and murders or rapes your family. Now, they could care less. All they want is some money. They love the crime wave, and they love the criminal. That's the way they make their bread and butter. They don't care anymore. And God's people must stand up and cry out and take a stand like Daniel. Daniel said, I don't care how much Nebuchadnezzar commands that I drink wine. I'm not going to do it. And I'm not going to eat his hog meat. And I don't care what he says about it. I remain on vegetables and that's it. And this young man had a backbone and refused to bow down. Now you listen to me, you young people. I thank God today that we have some young people that will not drink beer, wine, or hard liquor. We have young people, some young people today that will not get involved in the pot smoking any kind of uh, to biker spoken that destroy your body. We have some today that remain clean and upright and we commend them. You don't find many of them today will do that. Most of them out here with the world drinking and driving down the highway at breakneck speed and having wrecks and getting killed. You'd be surprised at the teenagers today that are killing themselves in automobile wrecks. Now if you drink you shouldn't drive. If you're a teenager or anyone, you shouldn't drink and drive. You shouldn't do that. You know that's wrong. You know you should not do that. And many teenagers, they're driving too fast, wrecking their automobiles. Uh, many of them under alcoholic beverages, bringing hardship upon their families, upon others. And it's dead wrong. We commend our young people that won't do that. Now you stay pure and clean. And nobody should get under the steering wheel of an automobile if he's got liquor, beer, wine in his stomach. It's dead wrong. And he knows it's wrong. And if he has an accident because of that and he hurts somebody, kills somebody, he's guilty of killing someone. If a man drinks and drives his automobile and because of that condition he has a wreck and kills somebody, he's guilty of killing a person. And he ought to be tried for killing someone. If he maims someone or hurts someone permanently, he ought to be held responsible for that. Whether you like it or not, we, it's appointed unto men to die and after that the judgment. And we must face God Almighty. And you go out and drink and bow down to this world and get with the wrong crowd and destroy your body. Then you go and answer to God in the day of judgment. Daniel said, I am not going to drink your wine. Now, young people, you listen to me. Be a total abstainer. Don't drink beer, wine, or hard liquor. Don't smoke pot or any other kind of dope. Don't get on dope. Stay clean and pure. You'll be glad you did ere you come to the end of life's journey. Many people today suffering because of their terrible sin they committed in their youth. Now you stay clean. You'll be glad you thank God for clean young people today. Daniel was one of them. He would not bend. He said, I'm not going to do it. I don't care what Nebuchadnezzar has to say about it. And so you young people do like Daniel. Purpose in your heart. You'll not defile your body. During the Korean conflict, there's a boy that called from Atlanta, told his mother and dad in Virginia he'd soon be home. They hadn't seen that boy in a period of time, several months or maybe a couple of years. He was involved in the Korean conflict. And they were so anxious to see their only boy. And they started making preparation. They cleaned the house. Mother baked the cakes, got everything fixed up that he liked. Just couldn't hardly wait to see her boy that had been in Korea over there fighting the enemy. He left Atlanta on the way home. 
and came down the stone mountain and when he came into the city limits of stone mountain a drunk now a drunk drove out of a side street didn't stop at a red light ran into this boy and killed him instantly now what the communists could not do in korea the liquor crowd did it up here around stone mountain and they're guilty of that murder on their blood on their hands today they have the blood of that boy on their hands and uh, they're going to have to answer to God for the broken-hearted mother and dad that never got to see their son alive. The communists couldn't kill him, but the liquor crowd did. There are some uh, uh, 50,000 people a day in America involved in car wrecks, and more than half of them because of drunken drivers. you got no business getting under a stern wheel with liquor in your body. You shouldn't do that. Now, you need to realize any kind of crime or any kind of accident that's caused by that, you are responsible and God will hold you responsible. You can't say, well, I just drank too many beers. Now, that's no excuse. God's going to hold you responsible. Daniel said, I'm not going to drink it. You have even today um, ministers walking around with their collars turned backward. You can smell beer and wine on their breath and liquor and call themselves preachers. They are not God's preachers. They're the devil's outfit. Any man that's a man of God, uh, born of God, spirit, called of God to preach and walk around half drunk, he should have a clear mind and be able to speak and think with a clear mind. Any man that's called of God to preach has got no business uh, drinking alcoholic beverages and walking around half drunk. He's dead wrong when he does so. I don't care who he is. Now, you need to realize that. God wants his people to stay sober, be a, a total abstainers, and leave that dirty stuff alone. Now, somebody said, well, it's just a disease. That's what, no, it's not a disease. It's a sin. You didn't come here with that disease. You come here with a damning nature, and you started drinking because you wanted to. People drink because they want to. It's not a disease. It's a sin. Some people says, well, you take the poor old homosexual. That's just in their genes, their nature to be a homosexual. No, no. No, no. They train themselves to be homosexual. They had no propensity in that direction when they were born. They went in that direction deliberately because they wanted to. If a man starts drinking or gambling or he's a homosexual, they do that because they want to. They weren't born here with a propensity in that direction. Not at all. We can't blame these things on our birth. Beloved people do these things because they want to. They drink because they want to. They are homosexuals and lesbians because they want to be. They are gamblers because they want to be. They are curses because they want to be. They are robbers and stealers and murderers because they want to be. We all come here just alike with a damnic nature. This left up to us is what we do about that. Now can we can be them stainer, we can bring ourselves under control, or we can just move out and, and try to blame it on our parents and on our, our birds, and we just uh, just leaning in that direction. No, no, that is not true. When you reach age of accountability, you do what you want to do. If you want to become a, a pot smoker, you do. If you want to become a tobacco chewer, you do. If you want to become a snuff dipper, you do. If you want to become a cigarette smoker, you do. If you want to become a, a beer guzzler, then you become a beer guzzler. If you want to be a wine belly, then you become a wine belly. If you want to be a liquor head, then you become a liquor head. You do that because you want to. You weren't born to do that. Don't blame that on your parents. Don't even blame it on the devil because he's ashamed of a lot of people. You do that because you want to do that. And it's dead wrong. Men out here some time ago in uh, Arkansas came in drunk and they had one of these old iron stoves there where they had to heat the house. And when he walked in the door, his little baby started crawling up to him, reaching out his little hands for daddy to take it. He reached down and grabbed that baby by its heels and burst his brains out across that stove. When he sobered up, he was weeping and crying. He said, you know, I was drunk. I didn't intend to do that. I wouldn't have done that. Well, he had no business getting drunk, and he's just as guilty of cold-blooded murder had he not had a drop in his body. 
Now, when you get drunk and you do these things wrong, you can't blame it on liquor. You shouldn't drink that liquor. The whiskey helped you be willing to do it, but you should have known not to drink it to start with. Now, you need to be an upright, total abstainer, and say, no, I'm not going to allow that stuff and dope to get my body and control my body. You should be a real man. Stand up on your hind legs and say, bless God, I'm going to do like Daniel of old. I'm not going to drink the king's wine. I'm not going around the drinking house. I'm having nothing to do with that crowd that do. And so say with God's people. That's the only way you're going to be able to make it is to stay on your knees in the book of God, in the house of God, and so say it with better company with the people of God. Daniel says, I'm not going to be it. They said, Daniel, if you don't stop your praying, we're going to feed you the lies. He said, help yourself. I'm going to pray like I've been praying every day. And he wouldn't be it. He wouldn't be it. They threw him in the lion's den, but didn't faze him. And uh, Daniel didn't lose an hour of sleep that night. The king did. The king, the responsible, lost a lot of sleep. He couldn't go to sleep. He walked the floor. Oh, he said, oh, Daniel, I, I know those lions destroyed that man, and I'm responsible for it. I signed that decree. I shouldn't have done it. And the king didn't sleep a week. And the next morning, he ran down to the den of lions and said, oh, Daniel. Daniel said, never mind, king. Everything's all right. You got nothing to worry about. Had a good night's sleep. I used the old big line here from a pillar. And the other one over there, he, he used his tail to fan me all night long. I've had a good night's sleep, King. I'm sorry you didn't sleep in it. King said, bring him out of there. He's a man of God. He's so much like God, the lions won't eat him. Bring him out of there. And they brought him out of the den of lions. And the king said, go get them fellas and put him in there. Throw them in there and feed them the lions. The devil's always been a fool. You give enough rope, he hangs himself. Daniel said, I will not be it. Then we come to the three uh, friends of Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Nebuchadnezzar put up an image out there. And he said, I want everybody to bow down to this image. When you hear the music, bow down. And they started the music. Everybody bowed down and stuck their head and nose in the sand. But there stood three men like the rock of Gibraltar. Like soldiers standing there. They said, King, do you see that? There are those three Jews, Hebrew children, that won't bow. He said, tell them. I said, bow down to this image. Start the music, fellas. They told them, they said, all right, boys, we want you to bow. They said, we're not going to bow. He said, all right, we want you to bow to the music. Start up, fellas. And they started playing again. And they stood there like wooden Indians. They wouldn't bow. You got a quartet here, wouldn't bend and wouldn't bow. And the king said, all right, boys, I'll tell you what. You're such a smart addict, fellas. I want you to heat that old furnace up seven times hotter than ever before. I mean, I want you to chuck up the coals. I want you to build the fire. I'm going to learn these three Jews to bow when I say bow. And they heated that thing seven times hotter than usual. And Nebuchadnezzar said, grab them Jews and throw them in there. They grabbed those Jews and they threw them in that fire. It's seven times hotter than they ever been. They wouldn't bow. They said, we are not going to bow. And they threw them in there. And the only thing that burned on them was the strings they had around their arms, no doubt, around their wrists. And old Nebuchadnezzar looked. He said, wait a minute, fellas. He said, that how many did you put in there? They said, we just put those three Jews in there. He said, wait a minute. I see a man number four in there. And he's walked around in that fire with them. And said, he looks like the son of God. And he was the son of God. When those men hit that fire, Jesus was right there waiting on them. He said, boys, don't you worry. We'll walk around in the fire to the glory of God. And because they would not bow, Nebuchadnezzar saw the Lord. Had they compromised, he had never seen the Lord. Now you listen to me. You go out here and compromise with the devil, then people are not going to see Christ in you. The only way people see Jesus Christ in you is for you not to compromise with the devil. These boys said, we're not going to do it. And Nebuchadnezzar saw the Lord. He brought them out. 
Nebuchadnezzar said, I want you to send the smelling committee down there. I want you to smell of them and see whether or not they got any smell of fire on them. And they sent the smelling committee down there. They were around, sniffed around like a dog. And they came back. They said, uh, Nebuchadnezzar said, we can't even smell smoke on them. Now, they weren't Baptists, pretty sure. If they had been Baptists, they might have smelled some cigarette smoke on them. They said, we can't smell any smoke on them. They don't even have a sin's hair on them, Nebby. Not a one. And the, the thing was so hot, the furnace was so hot, those fellows that came to throw them in, it was so hot it killed them. That he killed them as dead as a peck would be. He made head with a sledgehammer. Beloved, these men stood true to God. And God stood by them. Now, if you expect God Almighty to stand by you, be true to God. Do what God said to do. Don't be a compromiser. And they would not bend. They would not bow. And glory to God, they would not burn. Hallelujah. The devil can't burn you. You stand for God, the devil can't touch you. He can't harm you. You may think he's going to harm you, but he can't. God's done took care of his teeth. He's not going to be able to bite you that rowing line. God Almighty will see you through. And so we find this quartet here would not bend. They would not bow. And they would not burn. They determined by the grace of Almighty God. They were going to do right if hell froze over. Now God wants you to do right. Now what is right is right. And if you want God to be with you and bless you. And bless your home. Then you must do that which is right. Now some of you people out the radio listen to audience, you know yourself, you ought to be in God's house today. Some of you parents sitting out there, your little children, don't know what Sunday school is. Don't know what church is all about. You go visit the penitentiaries today and find out how many inmates they have in there that's brought up in Sunday school. You'd be surprised. Very, very few in there that ever knew anything about Sunday school. Just a bunch of little fellas brought up to know what church was all about. Their mothers and daddies fussed and fought all the time, separated, drank, smoked, cussed, lied, and so forth and so on, brought them little fellas up in that kind of stuff, and they ended up in the penitentiary. Little fellas at, 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 in teenagers, some of them committed crimes in the penitentiary. And you'd be surprised today at the crimes being committed just last, uh, the day before yesterday. There's some man that... Uh, uh, tried to outrun the police up here in a distant state, and he'd committed a crime and had stolen an automobile. And the law enforcement also gave him chase and is trying to catch him. And two beautiful young sisters in the late teens, look like, was going to God's house to worship. And then because of the officers chasing this man, he ran into that uh, car and killed those two precious girls instantly. Beloved, listen to me. They were innocent people and going to the house of God. And because of evilness and because of sin and, and because of drunkenness and because of lawbreakers, then innocent people are dying today. People are dying that are innocent, law-abiding citizens, even Christian people are dying because of sin, because of the drunks, because of the crime uh, committers, the lawbreakers. And let me drive this home to you once again. On the news this morning, on this station where you're listening right now, they said crime is on the increase in America. They also said the state of Georgia is leading the entire nation in crime. Entire nation in crime. Our law-abiding citizens, our law enforcement officers are trying their best, and the true preachers are trying their best to curb this thing and do what they can to curb crime in this nation and in the state of Georgia. I love this state of Georgia. Some of you don't like me to get up here and preach like I'm preaching today. But I don't care whether you like it or not. I love the state of Georgia. And I love our young people. And I love your homes and your families. And I'm sick and tired of, of drunks and liberal judges and the uh, ACLU, America's Crime Living Union, or Crane Lunatic, Lunatic Union or whatever it is. They are turning criminals loose and, and a liberal judges stay in executions and, and things of that type. I'm tired. I'm sick of it. And more and more people are dying. Honest people, Christian people, law-abiding citizens are dying because of it. You think I'm going to shut up? No, sir, I'm not going to shut up. 
until I'm buried and put in a hole in the ground, I hit evergreen. That's when I'll shut up, when God takes me out of this body, and not until then whether people like it or not. You know I'm telling the truth, and we must do something about it. Warn people and cry aloud and spare not. If we don't do it, it may be your innocent, precious child to go next by a drunk, uh, a law-breaking man in this country. We need to realize that. God help us. Now these men, this quartet, would not bow. First they would not bend. Then they would not bow, and they would not burn. This is tape number 240. The quartet that would not bend, would not bow, and would not burn. Let's stand our feet. Our Father, today I pray you'll take the message and use it. Speak to every heart in the radio listening audience. Speak to every soul here in this auditorium. And have your way in this invitation, my Father, and use the message and defeat the devil, whether people like it or not. Use it to your glory. Now, thank you for what you do. In Christ's name, amen. Debbie's going to play for us. Now, listen to me. There may be some of you right here this morning. You need to get saved. You need to come back to God. You need to join the church, maybe. Maybe you need to come down here and rededicate your life. If God is speaking to you, walk down this aisle and let us help you. My associate's standing right here. He'll help you. I'll help you. I want you to come while she plays. Come right on right now and get lined up with God and the church and God's people and take that stand which is right. Come on, God will help you. We have a baptizing tonight. Maybe you want to get saved, get baptized. Join the church and get baptized. Will you come while we wait? I feel that God is speaking. Will you come right now while we wait? Come on. coming. 